We had acquired this collection several years ago. It was a collection of a person who had been collecting for almost all, all his life. So we purchased this collection. It was just really a very extensive and a very beautiful collection of costumes and textiles. And this is a selection from that collection. There are many more items than that we have on display. But these are sort of the selections of the main parts. One of the importance of this collection is that he was able to collect from various regions of Ukraine. So we we're able to show the wide range of the folk arts and costumes. These are all from the beginning of the 20th century. Well, every costume would have an embroidered shirt. Each of the shirts really distinguishes by regions. You can tell the region by the way the embroidery is done, the type of embroidery, the kind of coloring that's used within the a particular region. And the shirt also became in time, uh, through the ages, a symbol of Ukrainian national pride. So even today, young women wear these beautiful shirts on various occasions that signify a certain importance in, in their life. People didn't really know why the tradition happened. In ancient times, before Christianity, during the pagan period, people looked for things that would make sure that some evil wouldn't befall them. One of them, they would be afraid of an illness. So at every opening, they would have an embroidery around the area of the neck, on the bottom of the skirt, all the entrances to the body they would have in birth. So it was a symbolic thing that they would have. A young girl learned how to embroider from young childhood, and she would create a trousseau for herself. And not only the costumes, the shirts, she would also embroider them for her future husband. She would embroider ritual cloths, like Roshniki as part of her trousseau, items for the furniture covers, for bed linen. So she would prepare for her next passage in life. They would spend the winters when they didn't work in the fields embroidering. It wasn't only that they embroidered things for their trousseaus, they would embroider them for the next spring, for Easter, that, that she would have something new and beautiful to wear and each girl wanted to do something a little bit more beautiful than her friend or, or her neighbor but what's interesting is that if you look at these art forms you could tell that these are from one region but then each shirt is different from one to the other they would try to kind of enhance their embroidery and, and create something really special. Lately, designers have been using Ukrainian embroideries in their fashion. In the textile department of the Metropolitan, the head of the conservation department was a Romanian woman. We had an exhibit with her here in our museum, a comparison between Ukrainian embroideries and textiles and Romanian ones. And she did a, an exhibit in the Metropolitan on the Romanian part. And one of her aims was to bring to the public's attention the ethnic and East European textiles that are really, really extraordinary. And to look at these items not only as ethnic embroideries, but also as works of art. 